so we have a lot of collections here at Lewis Skinner, but this is probably my uh, favorite collection in the garden. Oh, really? Um, That's a unique thing to say. Yeah. So many people love the flowers and the drama of it yeah. all. <laughs> and yet here we are in a very comfortable, you know, I'll say gentle, serene corner of the conservatory. Yeah, yeah. So the one with the spikes. The one with the spikes, <laughs> yes. The deadly spikes. Yeah. So what do we have here? Because obviously there's a difference from one side of this walkway to the other. Right. So um, at this section of the conservatory, we're housing our... Um, succulent plants, the cacti and the agave, mm -hmm. and the drought tolerant plants. Mm -hmm. um, and we have them split up into kind of two different sections. Um, this side over here um, are all the succulents of the Americas. Okay. Um, and then over here we have um, the other world succulents. Something we'll talk about in a few minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot to share there. But also there's a lot here to share. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like to know, this is, this is a beautiful collection, and it's so well kept, so I, Thank you. I applaud you on that. But as a homeowner, yeah. you know, what is your advice? How did you do this? Right, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think they, they kind of scare people yes. um, because of the spikes. Um, but really, they do make a great house plant. Mm -hmm. um, the really big thing about them is that um, they do, they're adapted to be drought tolerant, so they don't need the water that a lot of house plants need. So you can go on vacation and not have to have your neighbor it's, water them? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. That would yeah. Be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are some of your favorites that are here, Ryan? Um, that... So the agaves are probably my favorite succulent plants. Mm -hmm. um, they're all native to the Americas. Um, and we have several of those represented right behind some you. Some of them get a little large. They get really <laughs> large. Um, but they vary in size, too. Some of them don't get more than five inches in diameter. Ah. So they, they're really variable. Um, but what I love about them is they come in so many colors mm -hmm. um, and shapes, and they're just so symmetrical. Um, and I just find it, they're, they're beautiful. Simple beauty. Yeah, exactly. What is another favorite of yours? Um, well, the cactus, of course. Right. Another you know, all cactus are native to the Americas. Um, and it's kind of a love-hate relationship with the cactus um, because they, again, produce so many cool forms, um, but they also bite. You know, yes, all gosh, cactus do I know yeah, <laughs> <laughs> are characterized by their thorns, yes. um, which are really just modified leaves. Mm -hmm. um, and most cacti have adapted to totally losing their leaves. Um, and it's a great adaptation to um, help prevent water loss and then also um, prevent things from eating them, which in the environments they have adapted to, um, there's not a lot to eat. No, there isn't. Yeah. And, and that's an actually a very good protective uh, attribute of the plant yeah. is to have those thorns. Yeah. But how do these plants survive in the environment they come from? I was at Utah last year, yeah. fell in love with the place. Mm. Just, totally enamored by it. It's so different from the East Coast, yeah. but I noticed it's harsh conditions. Oh, it's horrible. Hard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to be well adapted um, if you're going to live in a place where there's hardly any water mm -hmm. um, and almost full sun, you know, you don't yes. have the protection of these other plants and structures that a lot of the plant, other plants like you would have here do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to overcome it when you're taking care of it um, as a homeowner by, you know, adapting to how much water you're giving it and really paying attention that you're not keeping that soil too moist. Right. Um, that's one of the things that really gets homeowners is that they'll start rotting the crown. Yes. Um, and the great, really great trick if you're going to keep uh, potted succulents is um, top dressing it with a um, um, like a gravel or a hard substance that's not going to hold a lot of water close to that um, top layer of soil. It sounds great. Yeah. So that where the root and the plant, you know, the upper portion of the plant, means that crown of the plant uh -huh. can stay dry. Exactly. Even when you do water it. Mm -hmm. So the water goes down to the roots, but leaves the top nice exactly. and dry. Yep. Do you wear protective, you know, clothing? I do. Or? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the biggest things in here um, to keep volunteers around, keep yes. them coming back and working. <laughs> um, we do a pair of really thick leather gloves, um, almost like um, falconing mm -hmm. um, gloves. Um, is really helpful. You know, repotting um, these oh, plants is a nightmare, and being able to actually grab the structure um, is super it's helpful. Very helpful. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, let's go from the Americas to the rest yeah. of the world to these succulents. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you have over here? Because I don't see the need for thick gloves and such, uh, except yeah. for one or two. Um, they really, yeah, they don't bite nearly as hard, um, mm -hmm. although they have kind of. Um, they do look very similar um, upon first glance. 
So this kind of rosette form that a lot of the aloes have, mm -hmm. um, you know, resembles the agaves quite yes. a bit. But mostly over here we have, you know, close to a dozen species of aloe. There are other interesting succulents that come in tree forms. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, kind of everything in between. Well, I see one blooming over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the giant stapelia. <laughs> oh, that's very unique. It so is. So why, who is the pollinator for that plant? Um, so if you come into the conservatory, when these things are blooming, you'll see flies all over it. And you might actually even catch um, a smell that smells like rotting meat. And it's because um, that plant attracts its pollinators by replicating the smell of rotting meat and yep. And it works. And it's very effective, yeah. <laughs> so over here, which are your favorite here of these plants from around the world? Um, so I've got to say I love the Madagascar palms. Um, Madagascar being an island has made for some of the coolest shapes and um, you know plants around and um, I just love how it's almost palm-like, mm -hmm. although it's not a real palm. Um, and then it's almost looks cactus-like, you do, it's not a real cactus. That is unique. Yeah. That's very unique. Yeah. Which is the easiest to grow? If you were to uh, share with somebody a plant to start mm. with, Yeah. which would you suggest? So I would suggest um, many of the aloes, the smaller aloes, are quite easy to grow. Uh -huh. um, and the grapiopedlums, which are these blue guys here. Um, uh, they're beautiful. Th aren't they awesome? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they come in so many shades of colors that mixing them can be really fun. If you mm -hmm. do like a mixed pot, um, you get a lot of different shades and colors. But you know, they will tolerate a kind of a wide range of um, water conditions um, relative to some of the other succulents. So they're a good starter plant. They, they're a little more forgiving on a little bit more extra water. Uh -huh, exactly. Okay. Yep. So these require the same conditions as our friends from the Americas of our cactus and succulents you know, uh -huh. of the desert. They still want it to be nice and dry and um, allowed to thoroughly dry, but to keep that moisture away from the crown of that plant. Right, yeah. yeah but yeah. what type of fertilizer do we use for these? Because um, we're not outside to get the rain. Right, yeah. And I'd say relative to most of the other plants in here, they are kind of um, low need as far as fertilizer. Um, but I will still fertilize them about every two weeks, very low dosage. Like half um, strength or quarter strength? Yeah, like maybe quarter strength, 50 parts per million nitrogen to 100 parts per million. Okay. Um, and yeah, they really just don't require a lot at all. Well, Ryan, this has been very interesting. Thank you so Thank much, Thank you so Peggy. much for sharing this Absolutely, with us. Absolutely, yeah. And hopefully others will find this corner of Lewis Skinner. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Thanks.